Hey, this is Gene from the Assisted Living Network. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Golden Girls. Not the TV show, but the model, the Golden Girls model. Now, when we say the Golden Girls, the TV show, some of us remember in the 80s, there was a TV show. It was four mature women living together, taking care of each other in a single family home. There was no caregivers, there was no chef, there was nobody there even to take care of the house except for that handyman that showed up once in a while to be part of that comedy show. But that show isn't just comedy, it's real. There's a lot of people that are living in a home right now by themselves. They've got too big of a home, too much space. They really don't want to maintain that home, but they have to to some extent. But they're there alone and they'd much rather have friends, people that they can live with. So when we say the Golden Girls model, let me explain it from two sides. The user side, that person living in the home, and then the business side, the opportunity. As a part of the Assisted Living Network, we share things with you to help educate you on the opportunity and then the opportunity to help and solve a problem so that we can make money ultimately. Now, the Golden Girls, they lived together, they were friends, and they knew that if they lived together, they would have that pure relationship in that home. As the show went on for years and years and they got older, some of them even needed some additional help and support. So when somebody moves into a home and they're sharing it with others, number one, they want to get along with them. They're not being forced to, it's a choice. They make a choice. Part of it too is who owns it and who controls it. Now, if you remember B. Arthur, she was kind of the, the bigger one, the bossier one and the Golden Girls. She was kind of in control. She was kind of the, the bottom line. Everybody had an opinion as all of us do, but somebody was in control within that home. Now, if those other ladies, Betty White and the others, didn't get along with B. Arthur or her character that she played, at that point, they would have moved out or moved on or done something different. So in a Golden Girls home, and it could be the Golden Boys as well, in that type of home, obviously, they're living together and they really do have to get along with each other. It's a choice. They're only gonna move in if they like those other people, if they want to be in that location. And in that home, the home is part of it, but getting to other things, amenities, is important. The culture of the area. My wife and I were in downtown Phoenix, Arizona this week. We went to a cultural event on Saturday night. We went out and saw an event. A dance troupe came in and we saw it. Now, the Golden Girls model, if they can get to public transportation to take them to downtown, that's a plus. If, if, if they have their own car, great. Maybe a place for them to park. If they want to go someplace like the library, the senior center, the grocery store, a movie theater, the shopping mall or a restaurant, obviously the closer they are to all of those things, the more convenient it is. If they can literally walk out the front door and get in a cab, an Uber or a bus or something like that, it's very easy for them. They can continue their life living it the way they want to independently. Now I'm describing to you the Golden Girls model. From a user standpoint, it's a group and it's typically all men in one home or all women in another home. It's a group living together. They more than likely have private bedrooms. Now notice a lot of this is different than what we have in assisted living. So I want to make sure we're clear in Golden Girls, it's independent. There are no caregivers. They're choosing to move in. So they probably have their own private bedroom. They may share bathrooms though. So it might be a four bedroom house with two bathrooms, shared kitchen, shared family room, shared porch and deck, all of that. Maybe it's a two car garage and maybe two of them drive and the other two don't. Or maybe they all drive and some park in the garage and some park out in the driveway. But it's independent living. Now let's go to the business side. Some of you right now have rental properties and you've been focusing on kind of the average the average home in the average area rented to the average family. And that average typically in our history here in the United States has been a three bedroom, two bath home, a mom, a dad, two kids, a dog. That would be kind of the common typical. But we also know some of you have been doing rentals where it might be four or five bedrooms. It might be a family with an adult or two and there might be four, five, six kids. Maybe there's a pet or two. So some of you are doing larger rentals. And I also know that some of you have been focusing on maybe the college housing or individuals where it's a studio apartment or a one bedroom apartment where it's all about having your space, but we don't need a lot of it. We just need that privacy and control. 
So all of those are fine, but now I just want you to think a little bit differently. Take a home and let's say it is three bedrooms. Maybe it's four bedrooms like the Golden Girls model. And maybe there's two bathrooms, maybe there's more. Maybe you even install a few extra half baths so people have private toilets and private sinks. But instead of renting the whole house out to one individual for let's say $2,000 per month, and then have that person pay for their own this, their own utilities, their own maintenance and so on, we do it differently. Instead of the whole house on a one-year lease, how about if we rent it out by the bedroom? Where we're focusing on seniors that want to live in this community, where they're getting an individual bedroom, but then they have shared kitchen and family room, shared space between them. And maybe they move in and their utilities are already provided, meaning their heat, their hot water, their water itself, maybe even cable TV, and the maintenance on the home. You wanna make sure the home is taken care of, so we'll take care of that too. And all of those additional expenses that we just described, the utilities, the maintenance, and so on, might be an extra five or $600 per month. But how much more could we charge if we did it by the bedroom versus for the entire house? If we were to rent the entire house for $2,000 a month, I'm guessing in that home, we could rent it out for $1,500, $1,800 per bedroom. Per bedroom, $1,500, that would be $4,500 in gross income. Now we do have additional expenses because I said we'll take care of the utilities, we'll take care of the maintenance and so on. So our $4,500 might really be $4,000, but $4,000 versus the $2,000 we would charge to the family. And when I say a one-year lease, the family might move in on a one-year lease and they may stay for a second year, but those seniors in that Golden Girl model are typically going to be living there for many, many, many years. We could even go month to month or a six-month lease to make it easy for them to come in, let them taste and try and see if it works for them. But then once they're there, they're certainly not going to want to leave and then we certainly can do a long-term lease after that. The Golden Girls model a great way to cash flow your properties or maybe buy properties that currently don't cash flow because of the rent in the area isn't enough to pay for the home and the debt service, but take a nicer home in a nicer area providing a different service. And those golden girls someday may need assisted living, which is a great segue into the residential assisted living homes. I hope you learned something about the golden girls and what you can do with your rental homes and providing a solution and an opportunity. This is Gene from the Assisted Living Network saying do good and do well. If you like what you've seen and heard, please subscribe.